leaving Islam is one of the hardest things uh, that anybody can do. And you guys have actually first uh, questioning it and then leaving it. It's it's amazing, and you should be proud of yourself. I'm trying to leave Islam, but there is something within me that's not letting me leave. There is something within me that's cursing me constantly. That you're being a traitor to yourself, to your family, traitor to your community. They've raised you well. They've fed you. They've done everything for you that you can imagine. And that's what you're going to do to them if you leave Islam. Yeah, it was quite bad. That went into really bad depression. I was self-harming for a while. But I think it took me about a year and a half to two years to admit it to myself that I don't believe in Islam. I had to go through that struggle. Uh, then, then the question of existence came in. I went into existential crisis and admitted to myself that I'm not a Muslim. Also brought identity crisis because I was in a country where I didn't speak the language very well. Uh, I didn't have many friends because I'd been through a couple of years of depression back. Um, didn't have anybody to confide in about the way I was feeling. So that pushed me into an isolation uh, where I just stopped going out completely. You were in UK for how long when this happened? Uh, I was uh, in UK for I think a year and a half. Oh, so you were you were really like you just settled here, and so I guess this was a long time ago now. Yeah, it was around 2012. Because a lot of times when people come to a new country, they find other people like themselves, and they go to the mosque or this. But in your case, because you were having this religious crisis, it became tougher because. Everything around you in, from your childhood, your parents, upbringing, all, all told you Islam is true. And now you didn't know anyone else that was doubting, probably? Not at all. For four years, I didn't. For first two years, I used to generally think that I am the cursed one. Uh, that's why like, people call me names on Twitter all the time, but it has zero effect on me because they can never say anything worse than that I've called myself. Because I've been through that, where I was constantly, every night I'm in my bed, I'm just staring at ceiling and just cursing myself for yeah. being the way I was. So there was all of that, like, is there any way that I can actually reconcile with Islam? But it wasn't making any sense. And I didn't speak much English back then either in 2013. Uh, I started watching a lot of TV. I was watching comedy all day long I mean, because there was nothing good going on in my life. I wanted to laugh. And yeah. comedy was the only thing that I found some laughter in. And most of the comedians here in Britain are atheists. At that time, I, hadn't, I still hadn't questioned the existence of God because God is just a given thing for you when you grow up in, in a country like Pakistan. Yeah, and then they'd make jokes about religion call Mary all sorts of names and rip Christianity apart. Yeah, so watching them, taking that in, that religion isn't that sacred that you can't even joke about. It. It's not that sacred that uh, you can't live without it. Things started getting better. I still had to work a lot on myself because I'd lost my confidence completely. I was getting anxiety attacks regularly when I was going to meet anybody new because I'd been in isolation for a couple of years before that I wasn't making any friends. I wasn't talking to anybody. So I, I still had to go into therapy and work on myself, gain some of my confidence back, uh, get rid of the anxiety somehow, did a lot of exercises around that. It, it just made me feel normal in a sense that there are other people. I'm not alone in that. Therapy helps. It helps so much because there were, uh, if anything, if your thoughts are all tangled up in your head, you don't know a way forward. They'll just organize it for you and give you, okay, that's it. that's what you need to do. We can get one through NHS. NHS is a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, and now, especially now, you have so many opportunities. Now we have our own therapist, ex-Muslim, like Jimmy Bangesh does a lot of work through Free Hearts, Free Minds, look them up. Um, it is something that we need. It's unfortunate because it, leaving Islam comes with so many of social and personal troubles that you kind of need somebody to talk to. Yeah, therapy helped me personally in just being okay with myself because when you're not okay with yourself, you're not creating any relationships that's good for you because you're not happy. You're not going to make any other person with you happy. And that's the spiral that keeps on going downwards.
I, I did went through my anger stage as well. I was angry at myself, as I said, but I was angry with everybody in my community back in Pakistan because I felt like I've been lied to my whole life. I've been robbed of many years of my life because my life was defined in a box so much that any thought behind that box just made me feel like I was being a traitor. Whereas I was just thinking that anger came on outside community, on family, on culture, on everything, on, on the country itself. I had to work through that as well. It's a well-deserved anger because, you know, a lot of people go to this when they leave Islam. When you go to a major change like this, it's okay to feel angry. It's part of the growing process. Um, some of the things that people say during this anger phase can be counterproductive to like relationships. It can be counterproductive to to even the activism. But again, at the end of the day, you know, I, I part of the maturing process is to realize that people do have an anger phase for a reason. I spent seven years of my life in that limbo of being hating myself, not being okay with myself, hating my community, uh, being angry being constantly anxious, isolation, depression, everything that you can think of. My first step towards feeling normal was the first time I came across an ex-Muslim. And for me, I use the word ex-Muslim with pride uh, because it highlights the journey I've been through. It, it tells people that I've made a decision based on my own thinking. It's not something that's been taught to me because Islam is a religion that provides foundation for your life. Islam takes pride in saying that it's a complete code of conduct and it provides you a complete code for your life, right? And getting rid of that foundation, you have to build your life from start again. And that's a big thing. It's quite scary. Some people take longer than others, but the first thing that can make you feel better is knowing there are others who've been through same. And that's where the label ex-Muslim comes in. It's highlighting an existence that is still condemned to death in many parts of the world. Yeah, it's, and that's a key point is the backlash is very, very severe. Like, um, this, this problem is much worse with ex-Muslim women than men. They have, usually have a much worse situation than an ex-Muslim man would have, but it's tough in both cases. Um, it's tough for people that are still living with their family. It's tough for people. It's, it's okay to be upset with someone, but it's not okay to harm them physically, financially, or emotionally because you don't agree with the belief or lack of the belief, right? So um, what happened with your family? That, um... I'm okay with the fact I've made my peace with it. It took me a while. I made sure that I only talk about it once. I no longer hold any residue of contempt or anger towards them. Because they've yeah. had an idea, because some one of my ex-girlfriend had actually outed me uh, oh. to them. And I had to lie back then. It was too, I think it was in 2017 somewhere. Oh. I decided I need to tell them now because it's been long enough. I was feeling quite confident about my atheism and everything in my life at the time, actually. Uh, told them. Uh, Mum went through all the emotional thing there. She'd been. Um, dad was quite angry, brothers and sisters. Everybody was at the time. And I thought, okay, I should allow them some time because they've had this picture of me in their head. And now I'm actually telling them no, I'm completely opposite. Within, I think, a month or so of us trying to negotiate, they said, okay, the first condition, if you want to talk about like trying to continue a relationship, uh, you have to stop doing the videos, first of all. Uh, I said, okay, I'll put it on hold. I'm not saying that I'm going to stop doing it. I'm going to put it on hold. Let, let's keep on talking because I, I want them in my life. I wanted them in my life, right? But I feel in retrospect, there was a mistake uh, because they thought if, I, if I've if i given in with that one thing, I'm going to start giving in. Right? From then on, every phone call just became about me and how they can bring me back to Islam. They started bringing in some ulama uh, home to talk to me over the phone. We had like a couple of two, two hour session with the ulamas. Anyways, it came to uh, emotional blackmail after a while, uh, where my mom was crying out on every phone call, was making me feel unhappy about everything as well. Um, but after about four or five months of back and forth, trying to uh, look over all the emotional blackmailing guys they have thrown my way and just analyzing the way they were making me feel after every phone call because I talked to them and for next three days I'd be unhappy 
and it was it started affecting my relationship it started affecting my friendships it started affecting myself and i was again i chose to go into therapy and talk about it and after a couple of session i realized it's time to actually make a decision uh, i know i'm not going to go back to islam and that's something they're not trying to budge on and every phone call is actually making me unhappy and i had to make a decision and we had to say bye to each other for good oh wow uh, the good thing is i told them when i was okay with myself secondly i i realized the moment it was it started affecting my mental health in a negative way again started making me unhappy and affecting the relationships i care about yeah uh, and then i i had to make the decision 